hello everyone and today i have harihara one of the speaker in regional scrum gathering and goal of today's conversation is that before you come to our gathering you know about the speaker and about the talks because in the gathering you have multiple talks going on in parallel and you may need to choose the talk which interests you the most and which can help you in growing and taking things in your professional life uh, uh, further so now, before we talk about your talk, Harihara, why don't you introduce yourself and we start from there? Sure, uh, take it. Hey, uh, everybody, I'm uh, Harihara. So I work for uh, Payment Technology Innovation Company as a program manager and uh, Agile leader. Uh, so I have close to a decade of experience in Agile, starting as a uh, Scrum team member, Scrum, a Scrum master, and then an Agile leader. So with my vast experience, I've done two transformation in a networking company. So I've gone through the agile transformation and then what are the different challenges that we have? And then I've come up with a lot of background. And then uh, I also have international experience. So I've come across different cultures, different behaviors, etc. So I love uh, working with people, connecting with the different diverse background. So uh, that is one. And uh, apart from the agile front, I also have a lot of expertise in uh, pro project and program management. Then I also have an uh, ex executive MBA degree from IMK. Mm -hmm. So yeah, and I'm a personal friend. I live in Bangalore, I have kids, and then I love playing with them, yeah. Okay, great, great. So yeah, mm -hmm. so we understand that you have been doing Agile and Agile related stuff for a while, and beyond Agile, you are also into generic management and program management space. So tell me something about your talk. Oh, yeah, sure. So I'm going to talk about uh, culture and you. So the moment you talk about culture, it's similar to the air, air that we breathe every day. And uh, you may not uh, really know how good or how bad it is, right? Uh, it, it's similar to an agile syndrome. Moment you tell agile to people, uh, they think about uh, it's only retrospective or, or it's just a stand up. But similarly, uh, you cannot take culture as something as granted. Uh, because if you look at it today in the industry, culture drives the performance. Culture drives the organization changes. So you, you, you need to understand culture well. So what I'm going to talk and present uh, in the Scrum Gathering is predominantly about what culture is, what culture is not, and then understanding the 360 degree of culture. What you see is not culture. There is an aspect of culture which is almost hidden, which is not visible to the eyes. And then I'm going to give you the effect of uh, culture on agile transformation. Uh, and then I'm going to give you a lot of recommendation on uh, creating a positive culture or an effective culture. So this is going to be uh, the first part. The later part is going to uh, talk about the winning teams framework, which is one of my research based idea. Uh, and then that is, that is followed by what are all the different uh, cultural behaviors we, we saw in my company by introducing uh, different KPIs for the executives and then what are all uh, initiatives we have done in my company uh, say it, it can be a mood chart it can be a, uh, as I said it's a KPI thing and we also have something called as a wow boat uh, that's called as a wall of uh, wow so those are the things I'm going to present yeah okay so what I'm getting is that uh, you are looking agile from an overall perspective and you you in your opinion it's just not about the ceremonies and retrospectives and other stuff. the culture mm -hmm. plays a bigger part in, in right. making agile successful mm -hmm. and you also shared that it's not just what is visible there are a lot of hidden part of of the culture right initially you talk about that how to see what the culture is and how to even uh, understand what kind of culture your organization carry and mm -hmm. And, and later on, you talk about a framework which is coming from your case study, your experience, and which has some tools which can help a uh, uh, participant mm -hmm. to learn about how to influence culture so that probably they can give it back that a, a better uh, yeah. adaption or better movement in the, in the team. So is correct this, am i getting it uh, right yeah you, you you're spot on so so you're right yes the the winning teams framework would unlock the cultural element at the team level mm -hmm. at the executive uh, we have come up with certain kpis to drive positive behavior because uh, uh, because today if you look at, at executive the the story points will not work for them mm -hmm. if not story points they, we may have to ask them to look at the value delivered so 
So I've come up with certain things also, so which I'm going to showcase, mm -hmm. right? And then certain other uh, wall board. It's called as a, uh, a wall of wall. Okay. So, yeah. <laughs> so something is 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 a stool which is called wall of wall. Correct. And, yeah. And some other stuff. So what is culture like? If if we just go brief in in detail. So how how do you how do you like uh, tell someone that this is what the culture is and that's why you should worry about. Definitely. So uh, most of the time, uh, what we see in the sense, you enter an organization, right? You, you see a colorful wall, you see people with different uh, uh, t-shirts, and then you see a lot of uh, fuse ball, and then uh, the high fund are guys coming here and there. Then what we say is, man, I went to this company, their culture is too good. But mm -hmm. what you see is not the culture. But what culture really is, is the untold story, the perception of people, right? And uh, the, the policies, etc. So it's a group phenomena. So how we solve problem, how we help each other, and then what drives is the culture, actually. So you got to experience it to talk about it, mm -hmm. right? So to, to put it in a nutshell, the culture is something as a group, right? What, what, per, what perception we have, and then how we solve problems, how we get along well. What are the different perception that we have? That's the culture. Mm -hmm. So if I take organization as a human being, so mm -hmm. uh, that that particular human beings beliefs and thinkings mm -hmm. looks like a culture to me. So it's like what he he perceived to be to others and what he really is inside. So maybe uh, the outer layer is the way he wear, wear the clothes, the kind of selection he does for, for his things, to right. make the feel about him and a mm -hmm. lot of things which he does in, in his own, is right. something which is a lot of hidden from the clothes and other stuff he's, he's, he's wearing. Right. It, it, if you consider the culture as an iceberg, so the, when you travel in a, a boat, the iceberg, what is visible to you is only 10%. But 90% of the iceberg is inside the water. So if you consider culture as an iceberg, what you see is only 10%. What you see is the colorful walls. You, what you see is the fuse ball. And what you see is, the, uh, is the, all the boards and etc. But what you don't see mm -hmm. is the perception of different people in that organization. Mm -hmm. right? Untold story and uh, unwritten rules, etc. So that, that is what. <laughs> Got it. And how do you influence it? So if we understand that there is there is something uh, untold and, and hidden and, and which drives the, the group thinking, which drives the decision making, which drives mm -hmm. the policies, which drives how people collaborate or compete with each other. And this all goes into the culture. Right. How, do you, how can a one coach influence it? So that's where uh, the challenge comes, right? So if you look at it, where the culture comes, culture comes from the founders, mm -hmm. right? So, so the organization is the mere shadow of the leaders. So when you look at there are four different teams, you have four different leaders. And the team is right. And and the, these four, four different leaders should 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 other to the companies or organization value if you look at it today right every organization will have a mission mission and a value statement and wh whom do you think has given the value statement the value statement comes from the founder and the behavior in any organization should align with the value right for that the leaders should live the organization value every single day Right. So although these are more of theoretical, right, uh, the, the most important challenge that happens is every organization will, will also have subcultures. Right. And it's, it's, it's predominantly because the leaders are not aligned to the company's value. If you uh, I will give you a quick example on that. Right. So if you look at uh, the uh, Zappos.com, right, uh, the, the founder. Uh, I think I forgot his name. He's, uh, so what he did was he wanted to come up with a company value, organization value. What he did was he opened it to all the employees. And then after a long year, they were able to assort from list of thousand to, to say total or 13. And that, that is total empowerment for the team. So, and then each employee were living together and now Zappos has been sold out to Amazon. And the founder is Tony Eze, right? So I was not able to get it. 
okay so what i'm getting is the culture is is influenced by the leaders and exactly. the leaders creates a values missions and gives a direction mm -hmm. and then there are other leaders who takes this mission forward and these these are the leaders who works with the team sometimes mm -hmm. these the other leaders who are working with the team are not in alignment sometimes mm -hmm. they are really transferring that same information and this all things uh, is is influencing the culture or creating the culture but how an agile coach can do anything Correct. about it so it's like that you go get into somewhere and you realize that looks like this culture is not promoting collaboration this culture is promoting competition now what do you do mm -hmm. Oh, <laughs> good question. So, the, yeah, it's the ultimate challenge of any agile coach, right? So, if you're not able, if you see a culture that is not collaborative, what, what? As an agile coach, right? We try to influence people, talk to people, and figure out what is causing that. Is it a will issue or is it a skill issue, right? Or is the organization as a whole has that problem? Because what I would uh, do in that scenario. right so uh, is it going to be a cross collaborative team when i say cross collaborative it's not co located team right so where i can use make use of effective tools say skype video conferencing so that you have a sense of feeling when you talk mm -hmm. but when you have a co located team and you have this issue then it's more of a will issue where that needs to be sorted out at leaders level talk to people and get it sorted out because the uh, moment you do a transformation right what has is Uh, the immediate question is what is in it for me mm -hmm, mm -hmm. right and uh, will my role become redundant mm -hmm. so these are the small little things that make people not more collaborative mm -hmm. so as a coach i need to figure out the root cause work with each of the individuals alongside uh, their leader and make a working work uh, environment conducive for them okay okay so what i am getting is that as an agile coach first you recognize it and then you find that okay this is what is happening these are the could be the probable reasons and uh -huh. depending upon the probable reasons you may end up uh, fixing it with the tools because it's not that the will issue it's just a logistic or an environmental issue which can mm -hmm. be solved easily if there is something like the, the the willingness itself is not there then you need to work on with the leaders and other parameters to find out how the will can be influenced or can be created to to collaborate rather than compete okay nice correct so, yeah, yeah yeah tell me a little bit more about your framework so what what that framework does and from where it is coming like what is the story behind oh great okay so uh, the the framework we had in hackathon in my company so i gave this idea uh so everybody is more technology savvy being uh, from a different background although i'm technical uh, this is sort of a framework i developed so uh, on a nutshell what this tool does uh, there is a team hypothetically and uh, they are green 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 in terms of delivery for the past five quarters and then everybody has i high opinion about this team and then i wanted to evaluate the same team uh, with the tool so i went and asked them guys uh, how is your meeting engagement uh, do you really love what you do right uh, do you as a team do you recognize and reward each other and then as a team uh, how is the stability and then do you have really time for innovation so these are the stuff uh, which gets unnoticed most of the time that happens at the background so there are certain attributes that have come up so these would really measure the culture at the ground level so what the executives and everybody sees is all green these guys have done tremendous in terms of delivery but the is the team really happy mm -hmm. how do you measure happiness there is there is no common way to measure happiness mm -hmm. but there are different attributes at the team level to figure out are they really happy with what they do so as i mentioned meeting engagement stability innovation uh, team get together are we all doing all those so these would translate into a score it is called as a winning team index and based upon that it would open the floor for inspect and adapt okay so what i'm getting is that there are some parameters which are many time overlooked and mm -hmm. you have compiled them based on your understanding of of the organization and culture and frequently the team can inspect on against those parameters they can right. rank themselves in the form of survey or in form of of group discussion and based on that some score comes up and that score gives them uh, another opportunity to talk about that okay what can they do about that particular score? exactly yes 
Yeah. Okay. Good, 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 good. So anything else you want to, to tell your, like the uh, people who, who might think of coming to your uh, session, like uh, anything? Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> thanks, Aikid. So, uh, it would be, it's going to be a very interesting session. Uh, if you, if you're open-minded uh, and think, and if you have the thought that I, I want to learn more about culture, and then I'm there to, uh, inside, I'm going to uh, fuel your thoughts, because the work I've been doing for the past year, I've been done a lot of research, studying a lot, many papers and have hands-on experience. So I'm also going to give some tips on how to uh, look at change the perspective from the executives. Today, executive look, the scrum team looking only for the productivity. So what we can do from our end uh, to make them look at the value or make them look at the outcome, not the output. So I have certain things for you. And how do you also tune uh, teams to empower them to create a uh, environment of conducive behavior? I've come up with something called as a wow board, right? So all those things I'm going to showcase. So this is something, a great opportunity for everybody to come and attend. So I would request all of you. So yeah, very much. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Harira. Mm -hmm. And uh, nice talking to you and uh, doing this, this call. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to see you in our regional scrum gathering, Hyderabad. Yeah, thank you. Okay, thanks, Aikid. Thanks for your time. Cheers. Bye. Bye. Yeah.